Okay, how can you explain the fact that so many Christians believe in the Bible as it is these days, although you claim that it contradicts itself and it's so obvious? You see, brainwashing. Brain. We all get brainwashed. See, last time when I came in 77, I was speaking to uh, students and professors in the University of Berkeley, San Francisco. And I said, you are all brainwashed. So one professor stood up and corrected me. He says, no, programmed. I said, I beg your pardon, programmed. We are all getting programmed. You see, we are all programmed from childhood into certain beliefs, certain attitudes. And if nobody comes along with a better understanding knowledge to reprogram you, to deprogram you, you remain there. Because he's like a drowning man. He's found something. You know, you say, look, this book can't help you. It is the spirit within you that has helped you. You have been an alcoholic all your life. And you are looking for a way out. You want somebody to help you. You know, you go home and you see your wife is terrified. You find the children are terrified. They're all getting out of your way. You know what's going on. You know, it's terrible. It's horrible. But what can you do? What can you do? You don't like it. But you are helpless. You are in the clutches of this devil, alcohol. And there comes along a person with a little charisma. And, you know, he says, look, man, think and believe that Christ is there for you. He's done everything for you. He's paid for you. Emotionally, you are in a mood for change. You are like a drowning man, struggling to get out, to save yourself from drowning. And the straw, you know, that you hit upon the straw and you were able to come out. You say, the straw helped me. I says, no, it was a struggle that you have been going on in your heart and mind. The struggle you put up brought you to the shore, not the straw. But now when you are trying to explain that on a logical basis, you say, look, it's, the, it's your struggle that saved you. Your intention, your sincerity that saved you. So, no, he's thinking that now you're trying to push him back into the mire. No, we are only explaining. But now people have gone through this experience and they're terrified. If they let go of this, Christ, Christ died for my sins. He saved me. He says, brother, it is your determination, your will, your faith that saved you. He says, no, 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 Christ saved me. As if he's trying to, he's terrified. He says, you want to drown him again, you want to push him back into it. Which is not the case. So you see now, we have to give the people an alternative. They haven't got it. The only book they know is this. And this book they can see, the bulk of the people they can see, man, what mess it has made. It hasn't got answers to the problem. So when he lets go, he lets go or he can, grabs, grabs anything. Hare Krishna movement. You know, the guys with a little pigtail, they go around dancing with the yellow saffron clothes and with the drumming. No, look, it is the mind. You know, you want something, grab something, I say, I get peace here. I get peace there. So you join the Munis, you find peace. You join Hare Krishna movement, you get peace. It's any movement. It, it is what you were yearning for, that you were striving for, and these are just excuses. The straws, the straws, the straws. It's not the straws that are saving you. So our Christian brothers and sisters, they don't know anything about the Quran. They know nothing about the Quran. If their own book lets them down, what about any Eastern book? The Quran, an Eastern book, what can it do for you? They don't know this book. And the trouble is with us. We haven't done anything to educate them. We ourselves, we don't know anything about the Quran. The bulk of us. How do you speak to a Christian? My Arab brothers. You see, look, no knowledge. You are good Muslims at heart. Maybe you are good Muslims. You know the Quran. But how are you going to explain to them what the Quran says? In your heart and mind, you understand when you say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Beautiful. Translate it. Translate it for your hearer. How are you going to translate it? So, well, you see, uh, the angel came and uh, he took. No. What else can you do? You know, yourself you understood it beautifully, mashallah. You know what it says. But now, you don't know the language, you don't know the right terminology. See, you are just a new person here. You know, you are maybe a mathematician and electronics and all that. But this language, how to translate what you are reading, you don't know. So, 
my brother said about you people, he said, look, those Qur'an are for the non-Muslim, American. He didn't use the word non-Muslim, but that's what he meant. American, you are, most of you might be born here, you're also American. Muslim, born here, you're American, but he said, no, no. He had in mind non-Muslim Americans, so he let them have it. But that's also not good enough. You see, you, I said, you Arab also need it. Believe me, you need this translation.